Hi, and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll take a look at how you can display your images using the Image Gallery widget from our key add-ons for Elementor plugin. At the moment, we're on the page where you can see some examples of this widget's use. It offers all kinds of customization and layout options. You can make galleries that are in grid or galleries that are full width. Additionally, you can combine this widget with other elements you like. Essentially, you can combine the widgets from the key add-ons collection to your heart's content. Alongside that, there are options for setting how many columns your gallery will have and whether there will be any space between the items in it. The image gallery widget is very versatile, so everyone will be able to find something that fits their requirements. Now, let's take a look at how you can use this widget and customize it. Head over to the back end, and in the Elementor sidebar, search for Image Gallery. The one we want for now is the plain Image Gallery, so this one. And let's drag it over to the right. Now, don't worry, the widget is on the page. It just looks like there's nothing there because we haven't added any images to our gallery yet. So, the first thing we need to do is add some images to our gallery. Click here to select your images. I'll be using these six. The images you add should have the same or at least similar dimensions to keep your gallery looking neat and balanced. Also, you can select multiple images at the same time, just hold down the shift key. OK. Then create a new gallery. And insert gallery. And this is what my gallery looks like by default. There are three columns and gaps between the images. Speaking of, if you'd like to change the image order, you can do so by reopening the window where you pick the images. So this is where you can edit your gallery. And all you need to do is drag and drop an image into its new position. And then it will be displayed on the front end, alongside all the rest, from left to right, in the order that you arrange them. OK, insert. And there's my new image order now. OK. Once you've set that, you can move on to the gallery settings. In here we have things like the option to enable the lightbox pop-up. It's set to yes by default. This means when someone clicks on an image, it's going to open in the same window as an overlay. And that way visitors can flick through your entire gallery. Now I'll just click here on the middle icon where you have the section settings and then right click to open the drop down where I can activate the navigator. And in it, I can click on this widget to reopen its settings. You might be thinking it's way easier to click directly on the element to open the options, but having the navigator at hand will help us get back to the options we need more quickly and easily. Now, we were in gallery settings, and speaking of the lightbox pop-up option, if we disable it when someone clicks on an image, nothing's going to happen. So I'm going to enable this again. The next option lets us set the image proportions. There's a number of options for you to choose from. Uh, let's try the square. Now, my images are a bit squarer and take up more space in the gallery. So you can go through these options and try them out to see which one you like best. For my part, I'll set this back to original. Then we have the number of columns option. It's set to 3 by default and you can change that number to anything from 1 to 8. So you can go for a smaller number, like 2, or something larger, like 4. As you can see from this example, you'll have to add an appropriate number of images for your gallery to look good. My design plan includes using three columns, so I'm going to get back to that. After this, we have the Columns Responsive option. Default is the same as predefined, and the alternative, Custom, lets us make our own responsiveness settings. This is what I'll be using, as I want to be able to set the number of columns that will be shown on each screen size. Now, we don't have an option for the largest screens, the ones that are 1920 by 1100 pixels, because the number of columns we'll be using on them is set when we pick the number of columns here. So, the first screen size here is for laptops, and you'd use this drop-down to pick the number of columns you want to show. I'm going to stick with 3 because this is still a pretty large screen size. And I'll leave the same number of columns for Mac screens and for landscape orientation on tablets. But for this one, the portrait orientation on tablets, I'll set 2 columns instead of 3. OK. For the landscape on mobile phones, I'll set 1. And I'll do the same for the portrait orientation on mobile. 
Perfect. Below this, we have the Space Between Items option. As I move the slider, you can see the space increase. I'll set 25 pixels for the value. It's a bit smaller than the original Space Between Items. Then we have the Image Hover option. The default setting is Zoom In. And when I hover over an image, we can see it zooms in a bit. We can switch this for Zoom Out, which looks like this. Or we can set it to Move and get this effect. Or we can disable all effects by setting this to None. I'll stick with Zoom In for my gallery. And if you picked one of the zoom effects for your gallery images, you can also pick the Zoom Origin. This option lets you choose which part of the image will be zoomed in. We are going to keep it at center, but you can experiment to see what fits your needs best. After this, we have the overlay color. So, if you like an overlay, you can set whichever color you like here. I'll set this one, for example. Don't worry, we won't end up with color blocks. Just give it a degree of transparency. There, that's okay. But you can make the color more transparent, which will make it even fainter if you like. It's up to you. For myself, I'll reset this. The next option we have is somewhat similar. It's an overlay hover color. So you can set any color you like and it's going to be visible on hover. Don't forget to give it a degree of transparency so the image stays visible. And then you get something like this look, depending on your settings of course. Ok. Let me update to save the changes so far. Now, underneath this one, we have a set of settings called the Developer Tools. When we open them, we can see there's just one option here. And we can switch the setting to Yes and get it to display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode. So we get this text. Then we can easily copy it for use elsewhere on our site. Alright, one more thing before we finish up. I want to show you how to change this gallery from in grid to full width. The steps are pretty simple, but a few things to keep in mind. We're all likely working with different themes, so how these settings work for you might differ. What I'm using is the key theme, made by our very own theme here at Code Interactive. The entire key theme and all 100 of its demos are created using the key add-ons plugin and both the theme and the plugin have been designed to complement each other perfectly. Additionally, we made sure the key theme is compatible with Elementor's full width page template. You should keep in mind that the same might not be true for your theme as, depending on the one you're using, the full width template might be rendered differently. In my case, with the key theme, in order to change the section with the gallery to full width, I need to go to settings here. These are the page settings. Then, under Page Layout, I'm going to make sure Elementor Full Width is selected. So, this is like a precondition. I need a full width page layout to be able to stretch my content if I want to. And I also have the key full width layout as an option. But that's limited to the key theme, so I'm sticking with Elementor's as that's the one you should all have access to. Now, a template won't automatically switch the page content from Ingrid to Full Width. For that to happen, you need to change the settings for the section. Click here on this middle icon to open the section settings. Then here, under Content Width, and this is the Layout tab, mind you, you need to switch the settings from Box to Full Width. And there we go! My section is now stretched across the full width of the page. Now, if you'd like to eliminate these spaces between the images, you can do that using the Widgets options. So, I'll just click on it here in the navigator to open the settings for the image gallery. And then in Gallery Settings, under Space Between Items, you can remove the existing value, or if you're using the default value, simply add the number 0. This will eliminate any space between the images, so we get this. A full width gallery with the entire space dedicated to the images. Alright, now that we've seen how that's done, let me reset the values. I'll put back my 25 pixel gap and restore my gallery to its in-grid width, as that's part of my intended design. I just wanted to show you how you might achieve a full width design. Additionally, if you're not happy with your section's width, you can adjust it here. By dragging this slider, you can adjust the width of this section all the way to full width, or you can type in a pixel width you want to use here. Up to you. 
but this option gives you another way to adjust the width of the content. And that's it. This is the gallery design I wanted, so let me update to save my work. Now if we look back on the widgets page, we can see the different things we can do with the image gallery widget and the potential variations we can make using it. Here for example is the version I made for this tutorial. But the options we covered will help you make an image gallery like any of these here. You can copy the style and look from the examples here, or opt to make something completely different. Going through this together has helped you to see how easy making image galleries can be with the key add-ons for Elementor plugin and its image gallery widget. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about new theme guides and tutorials. Thanks for watching!